We're coming to you live today from the Marin Farmers Market. We're going to talk to some of these people who are producing locally sustainable, healthy, nourishing food for us and get inspired about how we can eat in the name of our own health. Let's go see who's here. We now have sauce maker Leon Day, chutneyman.com, making sauces here in San Rafael. Given this broad line of sauces you're making, you got a passion for what you're doing. How did that come about? I think you've got to have a passion for eating to be able to make anything food-wise. Uh, if to be serious about this, because today's relevant uh, joke is uh, defined taste. I guess that's what it is. If you're going to be exact, if you like adventure with food, you start playing with food. But also for me, it's a kind of a reminder that you can start to do stuff that's probably going to perpetuate a joy that comes without words sometimes, comes in feeling and taste, senses. And if, by my own ego standards, if bringing a smile is payment, then I've been paid plenty. People seem to be paying a lot more attention to where their food's coming from, what they're putting in their body, thinking local, sustainable, freshly made, small batch production, et cetera, et cetera. So how about for those people who, who actually want to get more involved in that food community, what advice would you give for them to come do it? I think it would be any sphere of life. If you have the passion, use your words. If you have the passion for doing something and you want to perpetuate doing it better, you keep doing it. If you learn from mistakes, and then you've got a valuable plus. If you don't, get out. You know, in the context of being obvious, I think if you're in the food business now, you have to be cognizant of people's standards, of people's needs for health. You come to this market because you could shop in big name stores with things that are written up on the sides of jars that most people would know how to pronounce. I can't, half of them. So very simple theory. If you know what it is and you can understand it, odds are going to like it better. There are many, many people here that have a valuable asset to the community. And if we were to take this as a podium of well-being and social commentary, well, come to your farmer's market and I'll be a little prophetic here. I say come to your farmer's market and come grow with us. We're here with Tim Boughton, and this is Amber Oaks. I've been doing farming since I was a kid. I grew up on a, a little piece of property, and I started working for the neighbor when I was 12. He had 20 acres, and um, I took over the farm there, about five acres of that property after high school, and I'm up to 40 acres now. We do uh, the farmer's markets, and I have educational field trips all of October at my farm. You're exactly why we're here, teaching people how to save seed, how to do cuttings, how to clone things, how to uh, graft maybe even, and... You know, I love it. And we find ways to get um, safe seeds, for one, but also buy through seed savers or other organic seed um, productions so that you have sustainable type of stuff that you can grow, not from Monsanto, things that are genetically modified. We're staying away from that. Um, I mean, you know, like in Hawaii, you can't even grow corn in your yard if you're in Hawaii, if you live there, because Monsanto owns the rights to grow corn in all of Hawaii. So this kind of stuff we're trying to get rid of, stay away from. You know, have some more natural type of stuff. Okay, we're here with Joella from Front Porch Farms. Hi, good morning. What do you do at the farm, and how long have you been there, and how did that come about? So I started at the farm in March, and I work in the flowers. I'm the assistant flower farmer, and I spend all day in the flowers, harvesting orders, or planting the flowers. Great. Where's your farm located? Our farm sits on the beautiful Russian River, right in Healdsburg, and it's nestled into this little valley. It's 110 acres. And at the farm, we're extremely diversified. So we grow everything from grapes for wine, heritage polenta, flowers, fruits, vegetables. The, how easy is it to grow? The, you're, you're managing out on the farm. So, I mean, to tell us a little bit about the, the growing of these. So we grow flowers year-round. So we'll start harvesting our ranunculus and our anemones and poppies in January and kind of go through the whole season. So right now we're in the heat of the um, summer. So we have marigolds and dahlias and all that. Um, we do a lot of events such as weddings and sell to florists in San Francisco. We're here at Marin Farmer's Market with Danny from Oroville, California, Wood Leaf Farm. Obviously, you're involved in some local sustainable food, producing, bringing it to the people. Where did you find a passion for that? Oh, um, gosh. I mean, I, it's, I can't think of anything more important. Uh, you know, uh, well, I think it probably first started with just wanting to eat really well and finding that to be one of the most important choices I could make and then realizing that actually the best way I could eat really well is to grow the food myself. So just, uh, you know, a brief 
word of advice you might give to people who are ready to get off the couch and come do something and yeah. participate? Like, what, where, do they, where do you start? If you have access to land, I think the way is to like grow your own food, put something in the ground. I mean, it's the best way to like regenerate soil. It's the best way to cut your carbon footprint. It's like great to come to the farmers market for the things you can't grow or if you don't have access to land, but like. It's just such an important thing for us to be growing our own food. We're here with Aram from Flying Disc Ranch, which is down in the Coachella Valley. I've been doing farmer's markets for most of my adult life, and um, I don't know what's not to like about dates. I mean, it's one of the oldest cultivated foods by humans. It goes back all the way, uh, you know, to Mes Mesopotamia. And they're, you know, they're really good for you, and they're super tasty. What and why? Permaculture. Permaculture is, is a... Uh, a philosophy of design where you basically design an environment to be kind of self-sustaining in, in you know in a way that sort of mimics nature so you basically and, and it's permanent agriculture so you know ultimately once it's designed it it requires a lot less human intervention and so it kind of runs itself ideally what are the benefits of, of doing that kind of farming uh, you know it's just more sustainable it takes it it, it uh, it uses resources more efficiently, you know, so you get water to do what it wants to do, you know, go downhill, and then it, it does does things. Instead of having to, like, reroute stuff and build dams and stuff, you're more like, uh, you know, letting nature do its thing. Every, people seem to be paying a lot more attention to their food these days, where it comes from, how it's produced. Some people want to take that a step further and actually get involved. Just a quick piece of advice you might give people who, who might want to join the, the food community. How do you break in? I don't know about breaking in. I mean, definitely come to farmers markets and talk to farmers. I mean, and then also, you know, any small little chunk of unused land can become, you know, productive in some way or another. So even if you live in the city, there's usually some little corner, even if it's like pots on your porch or something that you could, uh, you know, start playing around with and and, uh, and participate in, in, in food and plants. And it's good. We are here with Shelly. Hello there. Hi, how are you today? I'm doing great. It's so wonderful to be here. You are obviously a local grower. Local? Yes, local grower, that's me. Wonderful. Have you grown everything that you sell yourself? Everything's grown on my two and a half acre parcel in Sonoma, just south of the town of Sonoma. Yeah, and you said you've been coming to the Marin Farmer's Market for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Were you doing farmer's markets before that? Were you farming before that? I learned as I was cleaning out my mother's uh, things, uh, my family things when my mom passed away, that I come from a line of farmers. I didn't know that. My gr I knew my grandpa was a farmer, but I didn't know, you know, I didn't make that relationship. So um, I guess I was destined for this at some point. What I wanted to do when I first started this farm is to grow for chefs, specialty products for chefs. So when I was able to come to this farmer's market, I learned that there were lots of chefs here. It's hard to market to a onesie twosie chef in your town, try to find the right one and is he gonna want it next week and but here I'm here every week and I've got their text numbers now so I text them to wonder to ask them if they want to have whatever I'm growing and whatever is special right now. Tell us some, some basics about what you're growing, your growing methods. I grow um, unusual things. I try to not grow the things that everybody else is growing. That's my little niche. It's not a very profitable niche because it takes a lot of education to tell people what these n new and different things are. But I try to grow something that's got a lot of flavor that um, people will get excited about and that will come back again. Wonderful. What a wonderful philosophy to have that you bring something unique to the table that is uniquely Shelley, uniquely you, and that it's not in the name of maximizing profits, it's the name of, in the name of nurturing life. Absolutely. It's not, it's not about the profit, which you know, it's nice to have money, but it's also nice to be able to do what I want to do instead of what I have to do. We like to wrap with a hug. Right, yeah, really nice. okay. Thanks so much for your time, Shelly. It's wonderful to see you and uh, hear a little about what you do. No okay. Okay. What gets my juices going is when I can find a source for good, fresh, local, organic, wonderful produce and other prepared products that I can eat and enjoy and know that I'm doing something good for my body and good for the environment.